I will come to the V class bump. The V denote V means vacuolar. Vacuolar. In the plant and in the lysosome, in animals, lysosome have this V class pump. Now this V class pump is actually look like a giant machine. It is actually look like a motor or turbine like structure. It actually rotate clockwise. Rotate. So I will suggest to, uh, I cannot uh, draw the exact structure of this uh, vacuolar or V class pump because they have so many subunits and the structure is so complex. It is very difficult for me to uh, draw it properly. So I will draw a uh, animatic diagram but i refer you that you can uh, see this uh, diagram in albert's or uh, lodi's or pollard any book you can uh, was uh, you can see the picture of this vacuolar v class pump now this vacuolar means the plant cells have vacuoles and also the uh, animal cells have lysosome so this is actually helps this this V class pump actually uh, a proton pump. They actually uh, uh, they move. They help in the movement of proton inside the inside the uh, vesicles. Now let me draw a cell and then a vesicle. So let's assume this is a cell. This is a cell, and this is the lysosome. I'm mentioning the plants uh, animal cells. Not the vacuoles, you, you can understand the vacuole also by same mechanism. So it is an animal cell because I am mentioning this is the lysosome. We know that lysosome have some enzymes that requires um, lower pH, that means acidic pH. In the lysosome, the pH of the lysosome is approximately 4.5 to 5 pH. But the outside, the cytoplasm pH is how much? 7. That means the pH, the higher the pH, that means the lower the protons. So here the concentration, if I write that the concentration of H plus proton is lower inside the cell and higher inside the lysosome already. Now to make it more acidic, what happens here? is a v-class pump are present so it looks like this and another uh, subunit is present here i want to mention here that this v-class pump and the f-class pump actually look very similar they are actually uh, looking very similar but they perform different function and there is the reason that is in case of v-class pump proton movement occur that means uh, H plus proton move through this pump H plus R enter into the lysosome proton so that the pH actually get lower in case of lysosome but the movement occur in this V class pump against the against the electrochemical gradient because here it is H plus so I am mentioning electrochemical gradient so the movement of H plus ions are occurring in this case V class pump against against the electrochemical gradient electrochemical gradient against because you can see the concentration of H plus proton is always lower in the cytoplasm than the lysosome now there is a problem occur if only this V class pump actually acts. Now I want to mention here I have uh, forgotten to mention that this sodium and potassium pump is actually electrogenic and the same is also true for this V class pump. These are called electrogenic. Why it is called electrogenic? So another term I am introducing that is electrogenic. Why this pump, especially this pump is called electrogenic? and this V class pump also called electrogenic. Let me draw these vesicles larger so that you can understand. So uh, this is the vesicles and this is the cell. 
this is the cell okay this is the physical lysosome now why it is called electrogenic i have mentioned here that you can see here the three sodium come out and two potassium enter that means there is always a single positive charge is missing always on uh, always when the three sodium come out and two potassium enter you can see here the difference is three and minus two that means always when the pump uh, uh, release three sodium and enter two potassium there will be a less positive charge inside the cytoplasm so that reason the uh, interior or the cytoplasmic region of the plasma membrane it remains negatively charged always remain negatively charged but not only this uh, sodium potassium actually contribute totally contribute to this negative uh, negative and positive polarity membrane potential no it partially 10 percent 10 percent of the membrane potential is actually uh, donated by this or actually contributed by the sodium potassium pump there are many different channels are present potassium channel and sodium channels they actually contribute to the membrane potential but uh, this uh, ch uh, pump also play a certain role very uh, less role approximately 10 percent they actually make the membrane to membrane potential that means this is negatively charged and the outside is positively charged because always there are a there is a, a missing of one uh, positive charge when the three potassium uh, sodium uh, come out and two potassium enter the same is occurred here how you can see here that so this is a v-class pump this is a one subunit there is another subunit here the atp are destroyed atp are destroyed in this section adp and pi occur that actually gives the energy and from this channel uh, hydrogen or proton actually enter so what happens what is the problem why it is called electrogenic it is called electrogenic because it generates the membrane potential electricity but here also some electricity occurs why you can see here that when a H plus ions enter into the lysosome in the plasma membrane there is a positive charge actually occur here and simultaneously a negative charge occur because you have to understand this the positive h plus proton actually balance the uh, positive and negative charge there is always a counter balance like if there is h plus then there should be some chlorine anion because this is a uh, uh, cation and this is the anion cation means positively charged and this is the anion okay there is always a counter balance there could be not be uh, such type of situation that there is always a positive positive charge inside the cytoplasm and there is no anion they always counterbalance each other so there is hydrogen h plus and there is also a counterbalance chlorine is present if one hydrogen enter here then the charge of this uh, lysosome become positive here and the same chlorine actually come close to this plasma membrane then another hydrogen if enter then another chlorine come close to the plasma membrane like this way like this way this lysosome membrane acts as a capacitor so what happens here as much as the membrane potential uh, starts to increase at first there are two positive charge and there are two negative charge outside this is uh, manageable many uh, some ions can some protons can enter but as much as the uh, level of the potential membrane potential increases electric potential because here the electric potential is getting negative electric potential here the electric potentials become negative and here the electric position become totally positive so the movement of the hydrogen through this or proton through this pump then shut down after a few hydrogen entering okay and scientists have calculated that how much uh, protons are required to make the lysosome pH 4.5 to 5 they have calculated that it's just 250 protons approximately 250 protons are just sufficient to make it 4.5 to 5 pH but maybe 10 hydrogen proton when enter 
the electric potentials become so high that the second 11th number of proton cannot enter okay i'm just giving you a assumptions now to continue the uh, movement of this proton there should be two mechanism or i will say here the first mechanism that plays in this uh, vacuoles in case of plant and uh, lysosome in case of animal that is there is always a chlorine channel is also present in the lysosome to maintain this why because as much as hydrogen starts to enter the rest of the chlorine that actually counterbalance the hydrogen gets increased here so for that the movement of hydrogen is actually stop but now if the chlorine starts to enter chlorine starts to enter through the chlorine channel then there is no problem so the problem solved in case of plant plant vacuoles and animal lysosome by this chlorine channel chlorine channel okay but now you can see here i have mentioned that here i also mentioned that a, when a proton pump out a potassium enter there is a second strategy if you want to keep balance the positive charge inside the cytoplasm you have two options one is you um, you just enter the chlorine or anion also with this positive charge here the hydrogen is entering chlorine is entering the ph gets lower because of this proton but the charge of this chlorine will not remain here and there is also not there they will manage in the inside of this lysosome because here chlorine are entering this is one strategy another strategy if you do not try to move the anion you have to move a cation here you can see the proton is a cation it is actually come out and so to counterbalance the positive charge they are actually entering the potassium channel potassium ion so this is how this b class pump cannot function by single so it is actually electrogenic it actually generate electricity or electric potential but for that reason chlorine channel is very important to uh, function it properly now i have mentioned that the structure i have drawn is the animatic structure there are so many subunits that it is a rotor like structure it actually degrade the degrade the uh, atp because you have seen that atp is degraded into adp and pi and the reason is because i have mentioned here against the electrochemical gradient this is the very important reason for b class pump against the electrochemical gradient the protons the protons the protons are moving these protons are moving against the electrochemical gradient because the outside ph is 7 you can see the ph 7 means the lower the proton so the here the movement of proton is against the electric potential electrochemical potentials or you can say simply uh, concentration gradient but it is against that's why this is uphill movement the proton movement is here uphill so it requires energy but in case of f class pump i have to remove some drawings you must note this all when i actually give you the lecture line by line so i have to remove this now in case of f class pump there are some examples i want to give you some examples f class pump the examples are bacteriorhodopsin this bacteriorhodopsin this is actually a transmembrane transport protein it actually actually acts as a pump this is a light driven not atp driven it is light driven atp is atp synthesis so f class pump are you have to mention here you have to remember this f class pumps are atp synthesis this 
F class pump looks very similar, very similar like the V class pump, but perform the different functions. Yes, they also pump proton. This F class pump pump proton. Same function. They also perform the same pump protons. Okay. But here another interesting thing occur. In case of V class pump, I have mentioned that this is the against the electrochemical gradient. The proton move against the but here the proton but F class in case of F class pump protons move down the concentration gradient down the concentration gradient or electrochemical gradient when we use positive charge or negative charge we use electrochemical gradient very simple here the proton moves down the concentration gradient this is the important term down that means here the movement of hydrogen occur downhill okay here the movement occur downhill so ATP are synthesized but here this is the proton moves actually uphill okay there is a difference against the electrochemical gradient you can down the here the down the electrochemical gradient okay so one example is bacteriotopsin that is present in halophile 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 archaea halophile archaea halophile means that salt loving like example is halobacterium so this bacteriotopsin is actually a light driven atp synthesis when light falls on this bacteriotopsin protein this bacteriotopsin has a uh, chemical actually a modification of vitamin a aldehyde we call retinal retinal this is the sensor this is the sensor of the light so when light falls then some reactions occur i will not go to the uh, more details about the how these bacteriotopsins work because there are some uh, amino acids that are involved in the functioning of bacteriotopsins the simple fact is in case of bacteriotopsins let's assume this is a plasma membrane and if it is the bacteriotopsins then hydrogen here the hydrogen are removing from the uh, cytosol to the vesicles here it enter into the cytosol so if it is the cytosol then hydrogen enter hydrogen enter into the cytosol down the concentration gradient down the concentration gradient it is very important so in case of bacteriotopsins there are many uh, uh, details but i i'm um, not go, uh, want to go into the details if you want to uh, read about the uh, details about the, how this bacteriotopsin function you can uh, read the pollard molecular biology of pollard book but this is a overall view i'm giving the overall view because i'm uh, giving the all information about this protein now this is the bacteriotopsin is a light driven here light is important you must remember light now another example is F class pump that is present in the inner membrane example that present in the inner membrane of mitochondria mitochondria okay like F0 FO F1 we can call it FO now here <coughs> the structure I have mentioned that the structure is similar this portion that actually embedded in the plasma membrane we call F0 or FO and this is the F1 so if it is the uh, F class pump then we call it F1 and this is the F0 in this F1 region here the opposite occur in case of V class pump ATP degraded into ADP and PI but in case of F class pump this ADP and PI actually make the ATP that is the difference just simple opposite occurs in case of V class pump, ATP destroyed to ADP and PI. In case of F class pump, ADP and PI attach with each other to form make the ATP. This is the F1 and FO. Why it is called O? Because here a med uh, medicine or you can say a chemical is present that actually 
inhibit this molecule called oligomycin for this reason it is called o oligomycin just remember for as a um, this only f0 sorry f0 as a group b questions information yes this uh, f class protein can also be present in the thylakoid membrane of plastid or chloroplast thylakoid thylakoid membrane of plastid okay so this is all about f class but now i will give you some overall view about abc transporter the abc super family means here is a very huge number of transporter proteins are present but i will give you some very important that can come into your csir examinations so i will give you some examples that is very important the example of abc transporters are like um, that is actually discovered in the animal cells called mdr mdr1 that is first discovered the name is different called mdr means multi drug resistance multi drug resistance what happens in some cells it has been found when a cell starts to express high amount of this mdr1 they this is also known as abcb1 abcb1 they actually release if a cell express high amount of mdr1 it release the drug that enters into the cell so the cell will not be killed like a uh, chemotherapeutic drug when someone is treated with chemotherapeutic drug if the tumor cells express high amount of mdr1 then the chemotherapeutic drug can be excluded out from the cell like one another example is chloroquine that is used in the malaria also it has been found that the chloroquine is excluded from the cell and this patient cannot be cured by um, simply uh, giving chloroquine so mdr1 another example is mdr2 this is very important mdr2 and this is also known as abcb4 you don't have to remember but as i have known so i have mentioned here but you remember ab mdr1 mdr2 this is very important you have to understand and just you remember this because you don't have to understand in this sections mdr2 acts as a flippage flippage i have mentioned what is flippage in my plasma membrane class and this mdr2 is present in the liver this is very important you have to remember this liver liver cells in the liver cells this mdr2 uh, pump is present this acts as a flippage what happens we know that flippage perform a function that's called um flip flop movement of phospholipids so in case of liver cells the phosphatidyl choline these phospholipids are actually uh, move from the cytosolic leaflet to the extracellular or extra exoplasmic leaflet so phosphatidyl choline move from cytosolic leaflet to the exoplasmic leaflet to the exoplasmic leaflet and then this phosphatidyl choline actually um actually mixed with biles so actually this phosphatidyl choline mixed with biles so this acts as a this uh, protein or pump acts as a flippage then another example it's a very important example so i'm mentioning it in green color that is called cftr cftr cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator this is very important because if there is any problem in this abc super family now i want to mention this cftr is not actually a pump because um, here i want to mention that that um, in case of all these that i have mentioned that atp is actually destroyed in all these cases atp helps in the transportation atp helps in the transportation when atp is break down the transportation occur it change the conformation of the uh, molecule then transportation can occur but in case of cftr 
the ATP just helps in the closing and opening in this case. It do not help in the transportation of the molecule. Like in case of CFTR, chlorine are transported. Chlorine. Chlorine are transported. And this is present in the lungs cell, sweat gland cells. Because what happens during the sweating, chlorines are actually released by the sweat. But this chlorine must be reuptake. So CFTR actually acts as a chlorine reuptake channel. This, there is a difference. You must remember this is not a pump. This is a channel. We call it channel. And I have mentioned that in this case only the ATP destruction helps in uh, opening and closing of the channel, not in transport of the chlorine. Because chlorine transport occurs automatically, it do not require anything. And the structure of the ABC superfamily is like this. They have two transmembrane domains like this and two ATP binding domain A1, A2. And these are called transmembrane domain T. And each of these transmembrane domain have alpha, 10 alpha helix. 10 alpha helix, membrane spanning alpha helix. And ATP destruction occurred here. Now, in case of bacteria, this ABC superfamily, there are 70 types of uh, ABC superfamily present in bacteria. This, in case of bacteria, this ABC superfamily perform two functions. It can import, it can export. You have to understand this. In case of in case of bacteria, the ABC superfamily can import or can export molecules. Yes, I have forgotten to mention what uh, which type of molecules are actually transported by this ABC superfamily, uh, like drug toxin, sugar molecules, peptide molecules, amino acid can be transported by this ABC superfamily. Yes, lipid molecules can also be transported. So in case of bacteria, import export occurred, but in case of eukaryotes, the most that thing occur called export. This is the most, mostly occur. But import can occur, but this is the mostly occur, most time. Okay, so uh, I will talk about CFTR because this CFTR is very important yes the CFTR cause cystic fibrosis if there is a mutation and scientists have found that approximately two-third of the patient two-third of the patient that have cystic fibrosis they have a particular mutation in the protein and they found the mutation present in the Mutation, you can say mutation or deletion. There is no amino acid in that position. So I'm telling you delta. That means some mutations or deletion, you can say. Phenylalanine, a amino acid called phenylalanine. You can write it P-H-E. Phenylalanine at the 508 positions. So there is a mutation or deletion. of the phenylalanine in the 508 position of the cystic fibrosis then the patient have cystic fibrosis approximately two-third of the patient is informed and why it occurs why if there is any problem mutation or in the deletion of this f508 why this uh, cystic fibrosis occur the reason is if the 508 actually uh, mutated get mutated or deleted then this protein that is present in the endoplasmic reticulum this protein is present in the endoplasmic reticulum let's assume this is protein that present in the endoplasmic reticulum cannot come out it cannot come out by a mechanism called COP2 COP2 mechanism okay by the COP2 because COP2 acts as a coat protein so it cannot come out for this mutation or deletions. So it cannot reach 
from the endoplasmic reticulum to the plasma membrane to the plasma membrane this protein cannot reach into the plasma membrane and there is uh, a uh, research that it has been found that this protein that cannot be transported to the plasma membrane there is a there is nothing actually any problem but the two thing occur one is it cannot transport it so transportation do not occur and the folding is very slow folding is slow okay the folding of the protein is slow in in uh, physiological condition or in a cell so body temperature i can write body temperature so when this is occurring inside the body body temperature means approximately 37 degree centigrade the 37 degree centigrade at the body temperature the folding of these molecules becomes slow if there is any mutation or deletion in the f508 and also cop2 coat cannot coat and cannot actually um, fuse with them can actually do not fuse or move to the plasma membrane this molecule but when they perform when they isolate this protein the protein that has a mutation in the 508 position at um, normal temperature room temperature room temperature means we do not room temperature means approximately 25 degrees centigrade when they keep this same mutational protein in the room temperature they found they are performing the good functions there is no problem so in case of body temperature this actually uh, folding becomes slow and cannot move because scope 2 cannot coat and there is a they prevent coating this mutation actually prevent the coating of the cope 2 and at the room temperature the protein functions very normal and uh, another thing i want to mention that um 508 yes cftr yes this is the uh, reuptake so cftr actually acts as a chlorine reuptake okay so yes so here uh atp actually gets destroyed here also atp can get destroyed and this is called abc that means atp binding cassity protein because ATP binds there. So this is all about ATP driven pump. If you have any doubt about this topic, you can write me in the comment sections. I will also take uh, more important, uh, more details about these uh, sodium potassium channels when I will talk about membrane potential. So thank you for watching and always keep learning.